Well, it looks like it's another nice and sunny day outside and I'm having a day of leave today so we can work on the Z3. But first of all, a warm welcome to all my subscribers and of course to the occasional visitor. Now, in this video, we're going to continue to work on the Z3 and we're going to reinstall the rear axle, the differential, the rear suspension arms and all the other parts like the half shaft and the drive shaft, all that. So we're going to put it all back together because we took it all apart in the previous episodes. So hopefully this might be the last episode of rebuilding the rear end of the Z3. Throughout the video you may be seeing some of this golden looking copper paste and I use this quite often on my bolts. Uh, to grease them up so they don't seize later. This is typically the stuff you use on your brake pads, but I use it for all kinds of purposes. So if you see that, that's what it is, because I'm not going to mention that every time. My girlfriend tells me often that I talk too much, and it's probably true, and I talk a lot in my videos. And that's why I have now added chapters to every video, so you can scroll on the timeline to find a specific subject or content within the video because I can imagine if you work on your car and you want to know how you replace a bushing for instance you're not interested in all the other talk that I have in my video so now you can do that so from now on you will see chapters in all my videos the old ones well they won't have it but the newer ones will have the chapter feature so with any further ado remember ado uh, somebody told me it was not without any further ado it's without any further ado so thank you for that. We're going to start, first of all, with installing the bushes into the rear axle. So this is our rear axle and the first thing we're going to do now is to install the new big bushes and these are the bushes and if you look on the bushes um, you'll find an edge over here and that's the one that should lean against the side of the uh, axle which is a bit bent outwards. You will also see that you have grooves in these uh, bushes, this one on each side. And that should line up with those indents that you find on the housing. So make sure that you put it in the right way, um, either that way or that way. It doesn't really matter, but it should always be the same uh, direction you should put it in. Otherwise, you can't get it in. Now, uh, make sure that the inside is very clean. And if you have a press, you can press them in. But I'm not going to use a press because I want to show you how you can do it with some very simple tools. Let's spray our bush with some silicon grease or lubricant so um, it slides in nicely. Then we position it right uh, where we have these indents, remember? And you might be able to push it in just a little bit and then we'll hook up our tool. Here we go. We're going to fit the through, align it and then put a washer up so we can push it down properly. This washer is too big, so I need a smaller one. Here we go. And then it's just a matter of turning it. And it should slide in very smoothly. I'm turning it in by hand now and you can see it already moves. So I'm just going to hold that a little bit on this side and then use my socket on the other side and you'll see how easy that is. And I really don't need to push hard on this. This is going in smoothly. But you got to make sure everything is clean and smooth inside. So the bush is now flush with the edge here, so that's how it's supposed to be. So now we can release all this and we are done. And here's that plumbing piece. I put some tape on it so I don't scratch the paint because I don't want to scratch it. Uh, I just got it all painted. So this is uh, just, you know, one of those pieces that you use in plumbing. And since I do a lot of house renovations, uh, I'm using that. And you can get this very cheap everywhere. I think this is like uh, one and a quarter uh, inch. Uh, that's the diameter here. 
The other side is probably a lot bigger, but it just fit on the edge of the housing uh, for the bush. So one bush is in, so now let's do the other one and then we'll mount the axle. As you could see guys, with some very simple tools, you can actually fit those bushes. So you don't need a press or any complicated tools to do that. But make sure everything is clean. Now before we go in to put the rear axle underneath the car, we still need to attach some of those um, connector holders. Now these guys go on pretty easily. They have these little pins here and that's where these uh, slide into. So that's not that hard to do and of course you want to have it in the right direction so there's a little hook that goes underneath the rim and then we can just push that in and that's it. So now we can install later the uh, connector for the ABS on this side. And I'm going to put some copper grease up where the uh, suspension arms are connected. So let's see if we can get the rear axle mounted underneath. I'm having it on the little lift because I'm a lazy bum. I don't like to work hard if I don't have to. And you might notice that I have some protection up as well because I don't want things to become really sc scratched and all that. So. All right, so I'm just trying to line that up as much as I can and get the drive shaft inside. All right, so let me give you a close up on one of the corners so you can see what we're doing. So I'm gonna try to move the rear axle so that the bush fits right on that pin. And I'm gonna do it at both sides. I can't see it from here, but I think we're getting, that's one. Now I wanna make sure that the other side fits as well. Oops. Now that we have the rear axle temporarily in place, I'm going to install actually the uh, rear suspension arms uh, because it's still a bit loose and I have more play so it's easier to work. So in other words, I haven't installed these brackets yet. Uh, they will go on last uh, once I have the suspension arms done and I will have to lift the whole thing up a bit of course because they need to go underneath the bolt that we just put up. So these bolts have to come back off. Then we install this part and then we put the bolts back up. So first of all now, these suspension arms. And also here, I'm gonna put some tape up so I don't scratch things too much. Um, if you work with two people, that is not necessary, but if you work alone, you're always ending up scratching things. At least that's my experience. Uh, so I want to protect that just a little bit. Not a lot, of course. If we have a paint that comes off because we scratch it, we can also uh, touch it up afterwards. But I like to do it like this. It's not that heavy, it's just an annoyance. Uh, I need to disconnect this. All right. Yeah. Okay, so now I need to put the bolts in. So let's see if we can position this a bit. And uh, so we can get the bolt in. So that bolt went almost in. There we go, that's number one. The next step is to get the spring installed. spot. All right, so now I can connect the shock. And of course we'll have to torque down all the bolts to the right torque. So I'm going to start with the shock absorbers. And then we do all the other bolts at the end. So now we're going to bolt down the bolts that are connecting the rear suspension arm to the rear axle. 
and for that uh, I will have to be in the way so you can't see that but this is just bolting down these nuts on both sides. So that was the first suspension arm that we have installed. Now I'm going to install the second one on the other side. I'm not going to tape it because it's exactly the same procedure. And then I'm going to lift the whole axle up a bit and remove the bolts and connect the brackets underneath so everything is then properly in place. And once that is done, we'll install the diff. So let's get on with it. I jacked up the rear axle and I'm still supporting it so now the bushes are all the way in the top so now I can securely remove uh, this bolt or safely remove this bolt I should say and we can install the bracket. Let me just get in between here guys for a second and the bracket needs to go right there. There we go. And we will lock that in place. Let's see if we can get to it. And now it's just a matter of locking that in place. And now I'm going to tighten up this guy before I lock these down. So, um, and we torque it. Okay, and now we can tighten these. I forgot to turn on my video guys while I was mounting the diff, but in essence I placed the diff on this hydraulic piston here, which is actually a differential or a gearbox jack, and I just jacked it up so that the four bolts were fitting into the housing of the rear axle. And then I lined up the rear part, the rear bushing of the diff to the bracket on the frame and just put a bolt through it. It's not very hard. Unfortunately, I forgot to film it. I have the four bolts on the diff locked. So now I'm going to lower the support. And then we can actually tighten up all those bolts. There's a bolt on the bottom, there's one on the top, and we have this on both sides, so now we just need to tighten that up. I'm just going to tighten that lightly on both sides, and then we uh, put it to torque. And the next step is to connect the main drive shaft, and once we have those kind of fitted, we'll put them to torque. So let me continue locking all these down and then I will bolt them down to torque and then we continue with the next part. Now to tighten these nuts up um, I'm using a kind of a crowbar actually it's an iron that I use to remove tires and I'm trying to lock it like this and then we can actually lock these in place because otherwise you cannot. Let me turn that to the next one. Uh, and this is our main drive shaft and this is the central bearing and remember when we made these marks when we took it apart so now we're going to realign this in exactly the same spot all right so next we're going to install the prop shaft and I want to make sure that the splines are absolutely clean and I'm going to put some corrosion protection up it doesn't have to be a lot but it makes it easy to slide it in and it protects it from rust if I ever have to take it apart again and also you want to make sure that the wheel hub is clean uh, especially the, the splines uh, because you will have to push that prop shaft in there Now I like to support the um, prop shaft uh, while I'm installing it, so I'm using this kind of an old dog collar um, that I used to have on my dog, which unfortunately died about a year and a half ago. But it's a great tool to support that prop shaft because you don't want it hanging down. So let's see if we can get this guy in there. Need to 
try to align the splines. Once you got them aligned, then you will need to push it in. There we go. I can feel it. And I'm just going to support it. So. And I'm knocking it in by hand. I think that's about right. So now let's lock down that shaft and for that one you're going to need a fairly big socket and I think this is a 30, a metric 30. So uh, let's see if we can lock it into place. Now you might need a lever for this to tie it down to torque because that takes a lot of torque. But I'm going to give it first of all a bit of pre-pressure with a pneumatic hammer or pneumatic, pneumatic wrench. So now we need to torque down that big nut and that's 250 newton meters and that's a lot of torque uh, to put up especially that we have nothing to hold it we don't have the brakes on you know it's almost impossible to hold that so the way to do this is by using some of your um, wheel nuts and put them in there and then I'm going to use a wrench on that to hold it and that always has worked pretty well for me so this is an example on how you can hold it and that way you can actually torque it and it's not going to move and I will lower this because I also will put an extension tube up so I can hold it even better but this is a good way of holding down that um, wheel hub so you can actually um, lock down the nut to the right torque so let's do that if you can do this with two people it's so much better because on your own it can be very tough to do. All right. Well, I might need to move it a bit further out. There we go. Add some torque. And don't forget to put this locking ring in. Like so. So we're going to connect the prop shaft now to the diff. And that shouldn't be all that difficult. We're just going to try to align it and then put some of those torque screws up. You may have to push the gate a bit down because that might be a bit in the way. There we go. And don't forget to install these little metal brackets. Uh, that's important. These are all torque screws and it's a torque 12, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to lock them all in place by hand first and then we'll use a the torque wrench and we're going to use the same method as we've done with the big nut that we did on the wheel hub. And the easiest way to do this is to always use the top one, rotate the shaft and always work on the top one because on the bottom actually the prop shaft is in the way. And we're going to lock again in the same way the outside wheel. If you have someone to hold it so much the better, but in my case I don't. So I will have to stretch my arms a bit and then try to get it uh, onto torque. Give it a shot. That's one. Let's rotate the shaft. Now we did the next one. So now we're going to fit the stabilization bar. And I have it all greased in with proper grease that does not destroy rubber. That's important. And I just sprayed these clamps blue. Don't know why, I just fancy that color sometimes. And let's put it in. Now I'm not going to lock it all the way in place because I still need to have the attachments fitted properly. So that's going to, and then we need to shift it left and right a bit. So it doesn't really matter much. Yep. 
let's lock it in place. And I'm not going to tighten these things yet. I'm just going to assemble it all first and then we tighten it all up. You might have noticed that I put some grease underneath. So that little part here, this is the linkage that uh, connects the stabilization bar to the suspension arm. And these are new uh, because the old ones were pretty much worn out, as I've shown you before. So let's put this up and see if it works. This little bracket right here, that's where the manual brake cable needs to go in. I'm going to connect it all loosely. I'm not going to tighten it down yet because I want to do the other side as well before we lock everything up because I want to make sure that the um, torsion bar or the stabilization bar is in the right place. And here it is. That's the second connection rod. All brand new. So this is um, a lot better than what we had originally on it. So let's see if we can get it on because this is a pretty small hole, isn't it? So almost everything under the car is now finished. We installed the rear axle, we installed the suspension arms, the springs. We also installed the anti-roll bar or the torsion bar and a lot of other small things. And of course the differential and the prop shafts. Now it's time to install the brakes. And the brakes is a combination of brake shoes, uh, which is the manual brake, which are sitting in here and brake pads. Now, I have to say, I really hate working on brake shoes. I don't like this kind of work because there is no good way of doing it. All ways are a bit difficult. So we're going to start by hooking up the brake cable. I already fed it through the wheel hub here and uh, we're going to connect that up to that special bracket that we have. The kind of a lever that opens up the brake shoes whenever you pull the handbrake or the manual brake. Um, and then I will install actually all the brake shoes with the springs and then we'll adjust them on the width. We put the drum up and see if we can move it because you should be able to move it and then we will adjust it until we have the right uh, feel on it. So that's a little bit of work and um, let's get on with it. And if you look on the brake shoes, there's a gap there and a wider one there. That one is always the top and this area is where we lock it into place. I position the flange in the right direction so I can put my Allen key in and I will be able to turn this little lock here. The way I do this is taking one brake shoe and put it in and lock it uh, with these special locks. And remember, this is keyed as you can see. So it is always good to position the wheel hub so you can put an Allen key through it and then lock it into place. So that's the first one we do. The second thing we're going to do is connect the manual brake line and this is what it is. So it goes in like this and the cable goes right here and that's why you're using this very small piece of metal to slide it in. All right, so let's do that and see if we can All right, so that's in place. I place the brake pad in there, right, like so. So the brake pad needs to fit into that little lever there. All right, so that is the first one. Now we're going to do the second one in exactly the same way, but we're not going to attach it yet. Uh, we're gonna let it loose. And the first brake pad has to sit against this metal block here and grabbed into the groove of this little lever. Keep that in mind. Now the second one will sit on there and it will fit in that little groove. So now let's do the second brake shoe and that is with a very strong spring. So let's see if we can hook this up and then... There we go. Oops, I almost had it. So that's hooked up. And the easiest way is just to lift it like this. and then try to pivot it into the position of, of the lever. It's a bit of pushing, but you get there at the end. All right, so next is the adjustment bolt, and that's an easy one to install. We just slide it on there, and again, uh, we're going to adjust it on this wheel here 
to open or close these uh, brake pads. So um, let's install it. As you can see, this is not very complicated and it goes in very smoothly, but we ain't done yet. We still have to put the spring up. And that can be a little bit of a problem. Now, if you're fitting this adjustment nut, then make sure it's all the way recessed, so at its minimum position. And this is the spring, so let's see if we can get this guy in, because that might be a little bit of pulling. And that's why I don't like to work on brakes. And to do so, I'm using a little hook to pull that spring towards the opening. All right. It's almost in, but it's not in yet. There we go. Now that's in. And now we'll lock this brake shoe down with this special locking kit and we are all set. But before we do so, we need to rotate the wheel a bit so we can line it up. Typically it never goes on the first time, but this time it did. And that's it. Now the brake shoe is now in. I don't know if it's rightly positioned. It's certainly not going to be on the right size, but that's all right. So now I'm going to clean up the pads a bit and then we'll put the disc up. So let's undo this little nut and then put the disc up and see if the disc is fitting or not. And now the disc should be fitting very loosely. So uh, I'm going to extend it a bit before we put the drum up. Because these brake pads have a little bit wear and tear. Otherwise it's too hard to turn through that little hole. Let's take the drum again. And this is still good. And you know, this is still running very loose, so we're going to give it a little bit more. And then I will do it through the hole once everything is put together. Okay, here we go. And now with the smallest screwdriver, we do it through the hole. That's a little bit more difficult. I'll do this until I feel a little bit of friction, not a lot. And now it's, I can still move it, but it's a bit more difficult to take it off because the drum has inside a little bit of wear and tear, and that's why it's hard to get it off. And this is about the right place to have it adjusted. And now we're just going to turn it around so we can lock it up. Uh, this is the hole to lock it. All right, here it is. There we go. And the next step is to install the brake calibers onto the discs and then we have to bleed the brakes and then we should be done. So I have pushed back the piston on this side of the caliber so we have a wide gap so now we can actually fit this onto the disc in an easy way. And I'll need to use the bolt in the back to lock it down. Now let's see if we can get to this without being in the way. And now we're going to torque it down and the cable that you see here, this is actually the brake uh, wear sensor which I still have to hook up. And the next step is to connect the brake pipes. That's one and I should have a support for the wire for my brake pad wear and tear indicator. Uh, that's this one right here. Slide it on the wrong way. That happens sometimes. And now we have the flexible brake hose. I will we'll have to release this nut here so I can take off the plastic and then we can connect it. It's clean up that connection from any debris. That's the last thing I want to have on there is debris. Okay. You don't want this to leak, so you want to make sure this is tight enough but not too tight. And now we can route the cable for the wear pad detection and only have this on one side through the little connector here. 
There we go. And then back underneath the car where the final connector is, where it connects to the wiring loom. So folks, we've come to the end of this video. And we reinstalled the rear axle with all new bushes. We installed the rear suspension arms with new bushes. We cleaned it all up, we took the rust away. And finally, uh, we put the brakes on, the brake pads, and we even adjusted the rear brakes. And now the car is actually ready to be tested, except the fact that we still need to bleed the brakes. But that will be for next video on how to bleed the brakes on a Z3. And then finally, we have to install the exhaust and the heat shield. And then we are completely done and ready for a test spin. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.